What's up, guys? So we are just a few weeks away from the live-action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender coming to Netflix. And so today felt like a really good time to kind of just sit back and think about and discuss why I have so much hope going into this show. These days, especially with big IP like this, like Avatar, or big franchises like Star Wars and Marvel, people spend a lot of times before a show or a movie comes out just being so negative, obsessing about what's going to go wrong or how are they going to change things from the original. And I just think that that's a really backwards way of viewing things. I'm a massive Avatar The Last Airbender fan. It's my favorite series of all time, and so I'm going into this thing with a lot of optimism, and so that's what I wanted to talk about today. But before I do, hit the like button if you believe that Aang can save the world, and also consider subscribing because you like Avatar, I like Avatar, it just kind of works. But this week we had an entertainment piece come out regarding the show and I covered that a little bit, especially the comments from Albert Kim, but I don't know if any of you guys saw this cover video that was put together showcasing the cast. You had Gordon, Dallas, Ian, Guillento, but showcasing all of them and giving us a sneak peek at some of the martial arts and skills that they're all able to bring to the table. Most notably, Dallas Liu looks like a beast, man. That is Zuko right there. And there was a really long interview and video posted to Entertainment Weekly's YouTube channel, just allowing us to get to know this cast a little bit more. And it has me really, really excited because it just seems like they nailed this casting. These kids seem perfect, and I think I'm most curious about Gordon. It's been really interesting just watching him during these interviews because this young kid, he seems like he has a lot of confidence. He also seems really humble, and he seems like Aang. Those are both traits that Aang, the character, carries. And I might be blowing this way out of proportion, but for me, this is like a kid getting cast as Luke Skywalker or something like that. This is like when Daisy Ridley got the part as Rey. Like, your life is about to change. And so seeing these kids, all of this cast, taking this on and embodying this and just looking at their excitement levels, they all seem very, very confident in this project. And that then comes across the screen to us as the fans, and that makes us excited. And then another thing I noticed is that they all know the show so well. I mean, I think I've brought up Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings in one of these past videos, but very similar to that like he had the whole cast get to know the books and they would even carry them around with them and it seems like what this show did is they made the original series basically like their bible they wanted to know these characters inside and out and i just think that bodes well they talk a lot about the special effects and from what we've seen in the trailers it looks fantastic but when you really think about it this is a long season and there are going to be so many different shots earth bending fire bending water bending air bending little things that us as an audience like we're going to be watching every little part every little detail and I'm just very curious to see how they maintain a level of quality with all that bending because there there's just a lot and then seeing it done well if the first season is a success all of a sudden thinking about that same quality and picturing Aang with all of those elements, you know, mastering all four elements. That is so freaking cool to me and that's something to be positive about, you know what I mean? There's a lot to be excited about and I think that gets overshadowed, like something that I've noticed in a lot of the comment sections, like the easy talking point that people have is that Mike and Brian left the show, the original creators left this show and that's kind of just casting a shadow on this whole thing. And it feels like that's just people's go-to, you know what I mean? I mean, and they haven't really looked into the finer details of it, but I look at it kind of with a silver lining, to be honest. Obviously, Mike and Brian are my heroes. Like, they created the original series. They are the George Lucas of this world, and so they deserve to be respected. And when people say all this stuff about this big feud that took place between them and Netflix, like, I just don't think that they're looking at the details right. Like, if you actually look at the letter that Mike wrote to the fandom, he's basically giving the show his blessing. Those guys want the best for this show. It's just not what they intended. And guys, none of us were behind the scenes and none of us know what happened in this situation. What I do know is that Netflix has made some of my favorite shows, Wednesday, Stranger Things. And I know that Netflix has given more than enough freedom to the Duffer brothers to create their entire vision. So whatever went down between Mike and Brian and Netflix, I don't think was necessarily about creative freedom. I think it was purely just down to the vision. And with all that being said, Mike and Brian then went on like a couple weeks later to sign a massive deal with Paramount and they're going to continue working on all of these amazing Avatar stories coming from that studio. A new Avatar movie coming in 2025 following Aang and the gang. And also there's word of a new series with an Earthbender Avatar or maybe twins that are like two Earthbender Avatars. That would be dope. And 
so they're doing that. And then with the homework that I've done regarding just the showrunner and everybody involved with this live action adaptation, everybody cares about it so much. Like everybody's pouring so much heart into this thing because everybody loves the original series so much. And that is something to be optimistic about. It really is because you can't take away that energy that is poured into something. When somebody makes something that they truly don't care about, we get the M. Night Shyamalan movie. And so I just don't think you can expect that with this show. We're going to get Appa, we're going to get Momo, we're going to get Cabbages, we're going to get Omashu. It's going to be perfect. We get an opportunity to watch our favorite show in live action, and we're getting to see it with the attention paid to it that it deserves. Like when I think about it that way, I can't be anything but optimistic. And I'm very curious to know what you guys think. Please let me know down in the comments what you think about all this. I know that there's been some more stuff that has happened this past week. I know this is a, a video about optimism and there's a lot of negativity stuff, but I do like just kind of shining a light on it and trying to look at things on the bright side. So obviously, if you've been following Avatar News in this last week, you saw some of the comments in that clickbait kind of clip that came out that went viral talking about Sokka's character. A clip was taken from that interview where they said that we took out the element of how sexist Sokka was. I feel like there are a lot of moments in the original show that were iffy says Guillaumentio. And obviously that just blew up and the whole world went crazy off of that one little clip. And this just kind of comes back to the attention that is being paid to this show and not giving the people that are creating it nearly enough credit. People don't understand the amount of work that these people are putting in, specifically the writers. And I feel like the audience these days just cannot wait for something to come out before they just have these rash judgments and rash takes. People are saying that this was the main element to Sokka's character in the show, and they're changing Sokka, so he's gonna suck now. And y'all, I can confidently say, I've seen Avatar The Last Airbender like 15 plus times. I don't know if that's like embarrassing or I don't know if that's nerdy, but that's just my life. I have an Avatar The Last Airbender tattoo on my arm. Like it's my favorite thing ever, like I said. And so my thoughts here are that reworking some of the story beats and dialogue that Sokka has does not change a thing. Because in the end, his journey is about becoming a leader and a better person. His journey is about finding his own path and carving his own way. He's the member of this group that's not a bender. And he learns to stick up for his friends. And there are plenty of ways to showcase that. And whether I agree with the dialogue that they change or whether you agree with the dialogue that they change or if we disagree, that doesn't matter at all. What matters is that they just do right by Sokka. And honestly, watching the interviews with Ian Owsley, I think they already have. Like, this kid is Sokka. I don't know if you've seen any of these interviews, but like, he's joking around, he's having a good time, he seems like Sokka. And so, yeah, I mean, twisting some dialogue, like, come on, guys. I can absolutely 100% confidently tell you that the people involved with this show are doing everything that they can to do right by Sokka. And any comments or clips or things that come out that can be taken out of context between now and this show coming out, my advice is just to not let that get to you and just keep an open mind and wait till you watch the show. You know what I mean? Because when the collective does these things, they unfairly attach criticism to the character or something that's going on with the character, that automatically, whether people like it or not, is attached to Ian Ousley, this young actor. And he's gonna get caught up in the middle of this drama, whether he says this or says that, and what's his opinion on this whole thing? You know what I mean? We saw this happen a lot with the Star Wars sequel trilogy, where a lot of these actors were just kind of like beaten up and berated online. And I hope, personally, just from the Avatar fandom and speaking as a member of it, I hope that we can do better than that because we are better than that. And there's so much to be positive about with this show. That's why I'm so optimistic going into this thing and just to watch it. And who knows, maybe it's not going to be what I'm hoping it's going to be, or maybe it's going to be better than I could ever imagine. I'm going to wait to watch the show to come to my conclusion. So that is pretty much all I have for today, my friends and fellow Avatar fans. But please let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments. I'd love to hear your take on a lot of this stuff. As always, feel free to write a paragraph down there. I will read it, and I really enjoy that engagement. Also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be covering Avatar The Last Airbender in full as it comes out, so be sure to check back. Make sure to smash that like button and click on another video. You can follow me on X at Jones Vibes Only, and don't forget to keep up the good vibes, guys. But Avatar The Last Airbender is coming at the end of this month, and that's insane, actually, to think about. Thank you.